Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gamansing. On Tuesday afternoon, the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority filed for a reconsideration of the Public Services Commission, the decision of January 26, 2017, which rescinded an interim base rate increase the commission had approved just two weeks earlier. Executive Director of the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority, Julia Reimer Sr., told members of the Authority's Governing Board on Saturday that an unexplained vote by the VI Public Services Commission has placed WAPA in a precarious and volatile position which threatens the company's ability to produce electrical service. Reimer's comments came during an emergency meeting of the board where he outlined the anticipated impact of the PCS's decision. Here's more. On Tuesday afternoon, the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority filed for a reconsideration of the Public Services Commission decision of January 26, 2017, which rescinded an interim base rate increase the Commission had approved just two weeks earlier. By filing for the reconsideration of the rescinded interim base rate, WAPA is lawfully authorized to implement the rate adjustments on Wednesday, February 1, 2017. In the filing, WAPA took note that the Public Services Commission action was taken without notice to the authority. Additionally, the Commission members did not discuss or provide any explanation for their actions. It is clear from the record that the sole reason the PSC rescinded the rates was in retaliation for WAPA's exercise of its statutory right to seek reconsideration of an order approved by the Commission in December 2016. WAPA sought the reconsideration of a number of provisions in the LIAC order where WAPA believes the Public Services Commission exceeded its authority. WAPA contends that the Public Services Commission's action in rescinding the interim base rate on January 26th was both arbitrary and capricious, and most importantly, not supported by law. The law requires WAPA be provided 10 days' notice concerning any Commission action. WAPA Executive Director Julia Reimer Sr. said Tuesday that due to the potential impact on the territory and after consideration of the substantial and irreparable financial harm that would be inflicted on the authority due to the unlawful action taken by the PSC, WAPA has made the difficult decision to implement the interim base rate increase effective Wednesday, February 1st. The rate increase was approved by the PSC on January 12th. Reimer said the $14.5 million generated by the interim rates is vital to the authority's power plants becoming more efficient and reliable. Residential customers who use 251 or more kilowatt hours per month, the increase on the bill will average about $16 or a 13% increase. The average commercial customer utilizing 1,200 kilowatt hours per month will experience a 20% increase, totaling about $78.64. Fatima's director, Mona Barnes, is advising the St. Croix community that the 911 emergency phone lines in St. Croix have been restored. Uh, reported earlier they were out and the system is fully operational. Early today, the system experienced technical difficulties following a power outage. Temporary phone lines were activated to receive calls while technicians worked to restore the system. They're thanking the public for the patience while they worked to address that issue. Governor Mapp gave an update on the National Guard and Vitima regarding Operation Vigilant Guard 17 training, the purpose and the importance. Here's more. In May of this year, the Virgin Islands National Guard and Vitima will host joint exercises in Operation Vigilant Guard 17. These exercises provide an opportunity for federal and local agencies to improve emergency response and recovery. Please tune into our local media for updates on this disaster stimulation, simulation, and do not be alarmed if you see our National Guard and other emergency responders in action. I am pleased to announce that Vitima, under the leadership of Director Mo, has been removed from high risk status. And that was a statement given during the State of the Territory Address. Meanwhile, Virgin Islands Vigilant Guard Region 2 Senior Leadership Discussion that was held at the Sugar Bay Resort and Spa as a premiere to the final planning for Vigilant Guard 2017. Local and federal agencies gathered on St. Thomas Tuesday, January 31st for a discussion on the state of emergency preparedness in preparation for an upcoming territorial exercise. 
Participants presented represented over 20 local agencies along with federal partners including FEMA, NORTHCOM and the Virgin Islands National Guard. They say the intent of the discussion was to form and strengthen relationships amongst civilian and federal partners, share best practices, identify gaps and discuss approaches to overcoming complex problems. We'll have some more from that training. Well, on January 31st, Turning to Crime reports about 7.11 p.m., 911 call center reported shots fired at Lorraine Village and Estate Grove Place between buildings 16 and 17. Here's more from the VIPD. Upon arrival, patrol officers found a black male victim lying with gunshot wounds. Another victim, 19-year-old Tahim Samuel of Mutual Homes, who was shot in the right arm and the right chest area. Both victims were transported to the Wang Iflui Hospital by ambulance. The homicide victim is 19-year-old McDonald Samuel of his state, Strawberry, who had succumbed to his injuries and pronounced dead at 10.15 p.m. by the medical doctor on duty in the emergency room. McDonnell have a criminal record. The Virgin Islands Police Department is asking the community for more information in solving crimes in the territory. Call the Virgin Islands Police Department Criminal Investigations Bureau at 778-2211 on St. Thomas, 774-2211, or you can call Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. Police say on Tuesday, January 31st at approximately 9.08 p.m., they were dispatched to an assault at Estate 22 in the area of Munster Hill. Contact was made with two females who needed medical treatment. Both were transported to the hospital for medical treatment. One of the females was taken into emergency surgery due to her injuries, and the other female was arrested and charged after she admitted to stabbing the other female with a knife. 18-year-old Karishma Farrell possession, was charged with possession of a dangerous weapon during a crime of violence and disturbance of the peace, assault third. Bail was set at $50,000. She was remanded to the Bureau of Corrections pending advice of rights hearing. Rasheel Charles, 30, of St. Thomas pleaded guilty on January 31st in federal court to conspiracy to possess with the intent to distribute cocaine and possession with the intent to distribute cocaine. Sentencing is scheduled for June 1st, 2017. According to the plea agreement filed with the court, Charles attempted to carry 3.55 kilograms of cocaine on board an American Airlines flight destined for Miami, Florida. When a U.S. Customs and Border Protection canine alerted on the bag Charles was carrying, Charles faces a term of imprisonment of not less than five years up to a maximum of 40 years, a $5,000 fine and not less than four years of supervised release was uh, sent as well. Information about personal safety and gun laws was shared as well as any updates regarding the reported rapes on the East End during a community meeting on Tuesday. About 65 people were in attendance at the meeting held by CAPA at VI Montessori School, including residents and law enforcement officials. The first gunpoint rape was reported on August 15, 2016 in the Pillsbury Heights area of Smith Bay around 4.30 a.m. and another in Friedenhoy, 4.15 a.m. on September 7th. There have been other reports of home invasions. In the latest incident that was on January 24th, a woman was attacked at her home in Estate Friedenhoy and raped at gunpoint. While many were concerned that there were no resolutions to the reported rapes, police reminded attendees that if they see something unusual in their neighborhood, immediately contact police at the Criminal Investigation Bureau or Crime Stoppers at any of the numbers right there. Virgin Islands Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett met with Speaker of the House Paul Ryan Tuesday to discuss issues important to the territory. She said she was grateful for the opportunity to meet with Speaker Ryan as they discussed important matters relative to the territory and legislation that she has introduced regarding some of those issues. She said, I think it was a productive meeting and I look forward to working with con congressional leadership moving forward. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has urged senators on Capitol Hill to approve his cabinet picks so he can start implementing his agenda. But Democrats are putting up a big fight over some of his nominees. And today, Republicans are hitting back. Diane Gallagher joins us from Washington with the latest. We'll recess until further notice. Tensions on Capitol Hill are boiling over as Senate Republicans Wednesday made an extraordinary move to push forward on two of President Trump's nominees without their Democratic colleagues present. For the second day in a row, Democrats decided not to show up, putting Treasury nominee Steve Mnuchin and Health and Human Services nominee Tom Price on hold. 
Finance Chairman Senator Orrin Hatch suspended the rules that require at least one Democrat to be present to vote. We took some unprecedented actions today due to the unprecedented obstruction on the part of our colleagues. Democrats have voiced concerns over Price and Mnuchin, arguing that they both made misrepresentations in their testimonies before the Senate. I think that we have a right to vet these nominees. We should know what's in their records. Down the hall at the Judiciary Committee hearing, it was more of the same. He personally went after me. He personally impugned my integrity. You didn't object then, did you? Senator That's Al Franken right. taking issue with comments made by his colleague Ted Cruz. But despite an effort to slow down Trump's pick for attorney general. The nomination is approved by the committee. Jeff Sessions will now face a full Senate vote. Well, welcome, everyone. Wednesday's drama could be just a prelude to the showdown over Trump's pick for the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch. Republicans need 60 votes, but could invoke a voting rule known as the nuclear option, shifting to a simple majority. It's a move that has the president's support. I would say, if you can, Mitch, go nuclear. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Keeping our eye on the economy, Apple says it's considering legal action against President Trump's executive order on immigrants and travel. CEO Tim Cook tells the Wall Street Journal the executive order is affecting hundreds of its employees. Cook did not say what Apple would do, but noted the tech giant wants to be, quote, constructive and productive. He also told the newspaper that he's reached out to very, very senior people in the White House to ask that the order be repealed. Cook's comments came after Amazon and Expedia announced plans to join a legal challenge to the travel ban, which has led to chaos and confusion worldwide, as well as protests at many U.S. airports. Let's take a look at the stock market watch, the New York Stock Exchange, according to the numbers there. The Dow up 26, NASDAQ up 27, S&P 500 also up. Coming up, we have much more. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. They were recognized for receiving A pluses. The Teachers of the Year were recognized by Governor Mapp. During the State of the Territory address, he congratulated and thanked them for their commitment. Here's more. Department of Education carried forward the theme, Transformation Through Teamwork, and recently completed the Performance Management Plan. This plan provides a foundation for the agency to implement a new way to improve the quality and responsiveness of public education for all children. Tonight, I am proud to congratulate and acknowledge our Teachers of the Year. The St. Thomas, St. John District Teacher of the Year, Ms. Kendra Vickers, please stand. <laughs> our St. Croix District Teacher of the Year, as well uh, as the 2017 Territorial Teacher of the Year, Ms. Dinah Brown, please stand. <laughs> Thank you for your commitment to our students. We are counting on both of you for your leadership and tenacity as we work to make improvements in all of our schools. Congratulations and thank you. Congrats to our teachers. Now during the address, the governor also commended Department of Human Services Assistance Commissioner Jeanette Turnbull Krigger for her role in securing 50% federal reimbursement funding for the territory's foster care program. The funding will increase educational and quality of life opportunities for children in foster care, adoption subsidy, as well as kinship guardian, guardianship. Governor Mapp also formally introduced Felicia Blyden as the new acting commissioner of the Department of Human Services. Blyden began her 25 years at DHS first as a social worker before moving into her previous role as administrator of the vocational rehab. MAP indicated that her name will be submitted to the Senate for confirmation by the end of this week. We'll turn it to Caribbean News. Ministry of Labor is working on establishing a labor code for St. Kitts and Nevis students. Here's more.
The Ministry of Labor has begun the process of establishing a labor code for St. Kitts and Nevis that will serve to improve the laws governing the world of work and better relations between employers and employees. The Honorable Vance Amory, Senior Minister and Minister Responsible for Labor in the federal government, shared the news with the public on January 24th at a town hall meeting dubbed Good Governance and Accountability for Prosperity. The session was the first in a series for 2017. Students in school leave in classes at the Charleston Secondary School were recently given some food for thought as they participated in the institution's annual job preparation workshop. Addressing the workshop's opening ceremony, Principal Education Officer Palsy Wilkin called on the students to examine themselves. Is your everyday behavior preparing you for your dream job? Are you keeping your grades up? Are you expecting to pass your exams, which are coming up shortly? What have you been posting on Facebook? It's going to be, it's going to play a very important part in your job interviews when you go out there. These are things which you must keep in mind. The Charleston Primary School was on Monday, January 30th, awarded for the transformation the school has made to its library. So noted school library's coordinator, Londa Brown, during a brief ceremony held yesterday at the school. Charleston Primary School has been awarded the Hands Across the Sea Literacy Award for the school year 2016. 2017. Hands Across the Sea is a U.S. non-profit organization dedicated to raising the literacy levels of children in the Eastern Caribbean. We'll turn our attention back here at home. Innovative customers throughout the territory are being affected by a failure with CenturyLink's backhaul carrier due to a high-level transport outage on the continental U.S. that began on Monday, January 30th. This outage is affecting private line circuit customers in both the St. Croix and St. Thomas St. John districts. Some toll-free traffic and incoming long, to long toll traffic to and from Century Link uh, is also affected. Innovative long distance 800 service is also adversely affected by this outage. Innovative has been assisting the team at Century Link to isolate the fault area and help them repair their outage. Customers experiencing interruptions of their 800 service and issues with Long distance are encouraged to call the Innovative Repairs Department for assistance. Virginia-based information technology firm Omni Systems Inc. has partnered with national technology vendors Dell and Micropact to host their third USVI Information Technology Expo. That's on February 7th and February 8th at the Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Married Beach Resort on St. Thomas from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. both days. Attendees will hear from technology providers about the importance and latest trends in cloud technologies and cybersecurity, best practices for human resources professionals to protect employee data, the benefits of storing information in the cloud, and uh, other topics about automating office environments. This event is free and especially intended for information technology professionals, human resources execs, and decision makers in the public and private sector. Well, uh, be sure to stick around. Um, we have a little more information before the break. February is National Children's Dental Health Month, and uh, Frederick said Healthcare's Dental Health Services, they will be visiting several schools in their continuing efforts to promote dental health education and disease prevention. The students will learn about proper brushing and flossing techniques, what to expect at a dental visit, and the significance of a well-balanced diet to maintain a healthy smile. These events are fully interactive with games, puzzles, and Q&A segments. Well, these are the schools and the dates right there. We have Juanita Gardine, Purby Lawson, Lou Muckle, Ricardo Richards, Eulalie Rivera, Alexander Henderson, Alfredo Andrews, Claude Omako Christian Academy, and Church of God. The Department of Health's Charles Howard Complex on St. Croix experienced a power outage this morning that caused extensive damage to the transfer switch, they say. The DOH electrician identified that the damage was too extensive for power to be restored today. As a result, the staff was dismissed at 10.30 a.m. The department does not foresee being able to repair the damage to the transfer switch until the end of the week. 
The executive team and directors are developing a plan to continue all services. In the interim, they say the DAH plans to see all community health and maternal child health cli uh, clients, MCH, who have scheduled appointments on Thursday, February 2nd and Friday, February 3rd. Additionally, the immunization program will still provide results for skin test readings on uh, Thursday, February 2nd, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Well, according to the department, the territory saw eight new cases, new confirmed cases of Zika in the territory, and no new cases of dengue. So there are 960 confirmed cases on St. Thomas, just two cases new, four on St. Croix, and two on St. John. The number of confirmed cases of Zika in uh, pregnant women is 150. Smith Bay Community, they're inviting you to their ag fair. I put that on the calendar that did this Saturday at the Smith Bay Ball Field. That's from 1 to 6 p.m. There will be lots of food, fun, arts and crafts, vendors, and of course, locally grown fruits and vegetables. This will be fun for everyone. Lots of uh, entertainment for the young ones, including bouncers. There will also be live entertainment. Again, that is this Saturday at the Smith Bay Ball Field. Well, be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. An area of high pressure pushing into the Atlantic is continuing to bring us an easterly trade wind flow of moderate uh, strength. So we'll take a look at our current satellite here off towards our north. We have a cold front that's pushing through the southeast of the United States and that's going to take a while to really begin to pull down across much of the southeast. Not so much affecting our weather just yet. However, out ahead of that, this area of high pressure right here in between the two frontal systems, that's what's going to be bringing us this easterly trade wind flow pattern as we head throughout the rest of the day. So along with this uh, system or these easterly trade winds, a lot of showers held down off towards our south, really depending on uh, the cloud coverage here. That's what's going to be uh, determining a lot of our uh, wet weather. We take a look at our current satellite and radar. Not too much moisture in the air overall as far as right over the Virgin Islands. We are looking relatively dry. These darker areas of red passing right through the island. So as far as our shower go there should be very spotty if we see any of them throughout tonight 73 degrees with partly cloudy conditions working our way into tomorrow 84 degrees for our high once again and once again the, the chances of showers going to increase uh, as we uh, see some of those uh, clouds pass over but otherwise we're just looking at maybe a shower or two they should be brief not extremely heavy and that also includes down into St. Croix out on the waters our waves four to six feet winds on the east 10 to 15 knots gusts up to 20 for the Atlantic and it is the same story here on the Caribbean side as well so overall not too bad of uh, boating conditions out there and pretty much for the rest of this week through the weekend into early next week that's when uh, we're going to see pretty much the same kind of story here temperatures in the mid uh, 80s with three passing showers so a little bit more sunshine possible as we head into our Sunday back to you Sandy thank you Keyshawn John of Ricardo Richards Elementary School is our featured artist tonight our star artist giving us some beautiful weather there and calm scenery. Keyshawn, thank you for that. Nice bright sunshine there in the corner. Repping Ricardo Richards Elementary School. Be sure to send us your uh, weather picture to be featured right here on News 2 to the address on the screen and then tune in to see it right here. That is all for now. Thank you for joining us. For all the latest, I'm Sandra Gumansing. Have a wonderful evening.